Let's create a fun embroidery patch that can be used with any shape, text, or design of your choice. Before you run the script, you have to take a few steps. Once you have extracted all the files from the zip file, you will have to place the fabric file into the patterns folder. You will have to place also the PSP script file in the trusted scripts folder, not the restricted, the trusted one. And also you will have a portrait zip file in there that you will need to extract to make a folder. This folder will include two files and the simplest way to work with this will be to copy the two files inside of a folder and Paste it on your desktop. Now you open that folder and you will see those two files. You need at this point to copy the path to this set of two files. So you can just click on top and copy. Then you need to open the PSP script file in Notepad. On top, you will find here a line say user defined variable, and you have portrays directory, and you have to replace what is between the quotation with the path that you just copied from your explorer. And so I'll paste it, and you also have to double all the backslash. And you have to finish with also a double backslash. And now you can just save it again. And you can save it with the same name. Or if you prefer to make it a different name, like with edited as an add on to the name. So you'll know which one is the original, which one is actually the edited version. Now you can go back to your paint shop and open the file and the design you want to turn into in an embroidered patch. For best result it is ideal to have elements that are around a thousand pixels between 500 and a thousand pixels in size each. So if you have a whole word, the whole word does not have to fit inside of a thousand pixels, but the individual letters should be around that size. So this one is around that size. And as you can see, you don't need to have a separate image. I'm just working on an open project and I put a black background because my design is going to be white, so it's a little harder to see. Once you're done, you simply run your script on the layer where you have your design. It does not matter if it's a vector or a raster, the script should work the same. Now I can choose the thickness of the piping around my element. So it will depend on the size you have and your preference. So I'm going to stick with the default 10 pixels. And I'll choose the color for this piping. I'll pick a nice dark blue. And now the base layer can be different size. It will depend again on your design. 30 pixels seem to be nice for this one. And I'll pick a color for it and I'll pick a lighter blue.
and now you're done. If I hide the bottom layer so I can see my project, you can see that all the layers are left unmerged. I wanted to have the design in white, so I can go here to the main design and I can adjust the brightness contrast, especially for white. It might be a little harder to get a nice white, but once you can tweak it, you get a nice result. You can also create the same effect on different designs and you can multiply them. Let's try this and create a fun patch. And this time I'm going to go a little bit bigger. I'm going to go with 15, simply because my design is a bit larger. And I'll pick a contrasting red. And now for the base layer, I will use the default value and you will see what I can do with this. And I'll use another base color. And I'll choose a yellow. Okay, but this might not be enough. Maybe I will want to create an oval all around. So I can do that because it's not going to affect my current layers. So I'll go just go on the top, use my ellipse tool, set to an ellipse, and I will make a design, I'll just make an outline for now, so I can actually see. And adjust the size. This looks good as far as the size. But maybe this is the shape that I would like to have as a light yellow. So I'm going to double click on my object. I'll remove the stroke and make a yellow, maybe a lighter yellow, so it doesn't compete with the text. And that will be it. Now I will run the script again. I'm going to use the same 15 pixels as I had initially. I'll use the same red. And for the base layer, I'm going to make it a little bit larger with 50. And I'll go back to a light yellow.
and I'm done. So now I do have all those layers independent of each other. And maybe what I would like to do is have my text on top of this base. So I can just go at the bottom and move them up. And in this case, maybe I don't need the base that was created. I'm just going to hide that or I can delete it. And the base of the image of the main design can also be adjusted. So maybe in this case, I would like to have my base more white. Or maybe not too much. And now I have something that is combining a base and my text. And if I want, I could repeat the process and get another element for the middle. And because my layers are all separate, I can move them around as needed. Now it's your turn to create a fun and unique custom embroidered patch. Have fun!